Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and our latest video. So if you're new here, be sure to subscribe. That really helps us out, and that way you won't miss any updates on future videos. So what we're talking about today is our new Ford Transit High Roof Extended, and we're going to be doing another custom van build with this vehicle. We recently sold our first van build, which was a Ram Promaster based 159 non-extended. So what we're going to be talking about today is whether you should pick a Ford Transit or a Ram Promaster when it comes time to do your build. So there's a third vehicle that I didn't mention and that's the obviously the Mercedes Sprinter which is a very solid platform but we eliminated it from our decision making process right away because of a couple reasons. Mainly, it's a Mercedes. The cost of ownership and service is extremely high. Also, the van is a lot narrower, narrower than the Promaster and the Transit, so you can't put a bed side to side. So, we just decided we were going to eliminate that from the lineup right away, and it came down to the Promaster versus the Transit. So, there's pros and cons to each, and I'm going to go over some of those with you today. Having owned both, we can give you an honest review. All right, so you can see we got our first batch of building materials in here. So we're getting ready to start the process. It is winter though, so not in a huge rush right now, but it is kind of a nice day. So I figured it'd be good to start talking about this. So like I said, we had a Ram Promaster. Uh, it was a 159 inch wheelbase, non-extended, and we've just bought a transit high roof extended which is a 148 wheelbase so you're probably thinking since we have the ford transit we already know that my opinion is that this is a better vehicle well kind of but let's get into it a little bit deeper so the first thing i said was the size you noticed i said extended with the transit here so we wanted a little more space than we had in the promaster and we definitely got it with this extended version, but you can get a ProMaster that's extended as well. They are kind of hard to find used, and stuff is still kind of hard to get new right now for both of these vans. Um, you can order it. Sometimes orders take a year or more to come in. Okay, so real quick, we're gonna talk about some pros and cons of each. I'm gonna start with the build out area here, which is obviously Kind of one of the most important things, obviously, about doing a van conversion. So you can see we got a ton of space in a Transit. And you also have a ton of space in ProMaster. But the big thing that we found with the Transit that is a con is the wheelbase. So you notice I said the ProMaster is a 159, either extended or not. That's the difference or the distance between the front and the back tires. And how you look at that is that is the usual space for flat area of the build. So since the Transit is only a 148, it has 11 inches less space from the front to the back wheel, which translates into less space right here. And why that's important is because if you want to put a bathroom in the middle of your van, or a shower, or something else like that, you've got this wheel well to contend with. And on the ProMaster, that is pushed further back, which gives you more space in the middle here. So that's why you'll see a lot of transits where when they do have a bathroom, people kind of choose the easy way, which there's nothing wrong with, and they kind of put that right behind the driver's seat, and the exhaust on the transit runs down the right side, so they put the bathroom in this area here and it comes right up against the driver's seat and it's much easier you don't have any space constrictions there's nothing below it you know you get the wheel well back there you could put like a table booth or whatever you want now on the promaster you have that much more space you can kind of put the bathroom back here and most people put like a table type dinette right here so that's what we did in our promaster and we really really like that layout 
and we're dead set on doing the same thing in the transit even though it's going to be a little bit harder because the whole point is we want to put swivels on the seats like we did in the ProMaster and then we want the whole front of the van to be usable space. So a lot of people build a wall right here and this becomes completely not usable space and that's just your driving area and that's fine if that's how you want to do it but if you really want to maximize the feeling of openness in your conversion it's really wise to use this area up here so when you put swivels on these seats um, you can have a table between them um, what we're going to do is try to do another single seat here with a fold down table so you turn around the driver's seat and this seat and you can sit across from each other this one can also be turned around for just lounging in the evening these become your seats when you're just relaxing in the van you really can make your van conversion feel as big as a full-size camper with a much better use of the space that you have all right so moving on so here's our floor area both vans have this kind of annoying bump out area right here this is basically you know the frame of the van it's structural you cannot do anything about that you just have to work around it the problem is that basically you have to inset anything you want to build that much further off right here it does seem to me that the promaster this is a little more pronounced even further up the wall than on the transit where it's mainly just down there you get the slight bump out here not a big deal i thought the promaster was a lot more squared off and it is a little more squared off but if you're going to be putting cabinets in the transit actually has kind of a nicer this area here is flat all the way down so there's really not much you have to do to finish this besides insulate it after you get all your wiring in you can kind of hang cabinets bolt them right to the metal right off the wall unlike the ProMaster where there's a lot more uh, curvature in that area right there that you have to contend with this is completely flat you could almost put like off the shelf cabinets right up on the area up here. Now on the transit, there is this wiring harness that runs all the way down the side and up over the back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect that because it is very in the way. And we're gonna tuck it behind all the metal and secure it so it's not resting on any sharp metal or anything and have that all tucked in and hidden. So speaking of, a lot of people care about this area here. So in the transit, it's completely flat from the driver's area, driving and passenger area, into the back. So this van is actually higher. So this is about 110 inches tall. The overall height of the ProMaster is 102, even with about the same head clearance. And the reason for that is because the ProMaster is front wheel drive. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in the mechanical section of the video here, but it's front wheel drive. It allows the platform to be lower in the back because there's a drive shaft running underneath. Also on the ProMaster, the gas tank is located under the floor up front and it really leaves not a whole lot under the floor that you have to worry about on the ProMaster. And that is a positive for it in the build phase is there's no drive shaft. There's no, just an exhaust that you have to worry about essentially and the exhaust actually runs down this side of the van on the promaster on the driver's side so a lot of people put a gray tank on the passenger side underneath there's plenty of room for that that's what we did in our promaster now in the transit the issue you're going to have so the exhaust runs down this side so most people put a gray tank on the driver's side if you're putting an undermount tank issue you have is the gas tank kind of protrudes into this area under the floor here so there is um, room for a gray tank but it's going to be smaller most likely than the promaster not by much promaster you can get about a 30 gallon tank and about a 20 gallon tank on the transit so it's comparable but that is 50 percent more almost so that's something to think about. That's right, so another important consideration where you're gonna put your bed. Um, when you have a large van, you, you have a little bit more of a luxury to be able to put a permanent mount bed, which is what we're going to do. We did it on the first one, we like it. Um, 
basically they make uh, you know we did not do bump outs on the ProMaster and it was a little tight for me when I laid in bed I'm about 5'11 I had my feet were touching the wall and my head was touching this wall so it gets a little uncomfortable if you shift around at night um, so since the transit is a just a little bit not as wide what we're going to do is we're going to do the build outs just the framing build outs to take advantage of the space right here so basically the bed will start here it'll be thinner insulation in this area and that way we'll be able to get a full-size bed the full 75 inch length across here no problem so you do have to kind of take into account your height your length you know how you're going to fit comfortably so in the transit extended there's a ton of room after the wheel well here so tons of room for a bed to go side to side whereas the promaster the wheel wells are moved back a little bit further which like i said makes some of this space a little bit easier to use if you're going to put cabinets here obviously you have to contend with building them around the wheel well whereas in the promaster the wheel well is back behind the cabinets so just a couple little things to think about um, both of our vans were having to put windows in so you got to decide what windows you want to use. Seemed like it was a little bit easier to find stuff cheaper for the ProMaster when it came to like windows and such. But we're going to have two back windows and a side door window. And then we'll have a some sort of window here like we did on the ProMaster for the dinette area. All right, so the last thing I'll talk about in here is this area above the door. So in the ProMaster, um, again, there's a lot more like of a frame that pops out here and it's very hard to finish this whole area right here in the ProMaster. The transit it looks like it's going to be much easier to finish because this is again you know this is where the roof will be this is completely flat so we probably will not put a shelf here because I like to hit my head on hit my head on things and I will smash into that shelf but this definitely looks a lot easier to finish on the transit but don't let that discourage you both vans have these styrofoam covers. They are a lot bigger here on this Transit than the ProMaster. Uh, we removed the ones on our ProMaster. We're still trying to figure out what we're gonna do with these. Some people leave them, they look horrible. But the problem is part of the airbag system is behind here. So, you know, maybe just covering them in some kind of carpet or something, you know, we'll have to decide what we're gonna do there. And then, obviously, the pizza oven area on the ProMaster, it's called that because if you do not insulate it, it gets extremely hot in this area out in the sun. But the ProMaster has more of a um, factory shelf built in. You can get uh, a better shelf from the factory with Ford. Um, you know, this, even just this little one was an option. We'll probably do something to add a little bit more storage to this area here because it's wasted after we insulate behind it. It is important to insulate it. The ProMaster, it's a little more of just a nice like shelf area. We kept all of our window coverings, and the windshield cover and all that stuff stored up here out of the way. It was a really nice storage area for all of that. So probably gonna try to do the same thing in here. It's just gonna be a little bit more difficult. So on the Transit, you see there's this little step here again the floor is higher off the ground, so there's a step. We'll need another step here. Your ProMaster is just going to be straight across and in. So it's something to take account when you're building your floor. Obviously, this is a high roof. There's plenty of room for even a really tall person, even putting a floor in a ceiling. All right, so looking at the back, it's kind of the last thing we'll talk about. It's the rear end of the vehicle. So the ProMasters, they have... They do not have an upper third brake light from the factory. That's a big missing thing that the Transit does have because the brake lights aren't that bright on a ProMaster. And so I added a third brake light to mine. They have those marker lights. Um, both vans have a camera mounted up in here now. If you get an older Transit, the camera may be down on the door if it even has one. One feature I really like, and it is an optional feature, but is these... Um, door stop so you can see the door stops right here and it locks so you can actually lock this then the door cannot move so if you're just loading around loading and it's windy or you can unlock it and go all the way around 
And you see these little protrusions right here. That's actually a magnet. So that holds the door fully open and gives you a ton of space to work. And it's the same on both. So the ProMaster doesn't have a magnet or anything like that, but the door does open that far. Okay, so as far as finishing off the doors, uh, again, the transit's a little bit easier because it kind of looks a little more finished from the factory. Once we have a window in here, we'll try our best to insulate the inside of the door. This area up here on the ProMaster, um, again, we had some wood paneling up there. We'll see what we can do with this. The key is we just want some insulation in the door. But then again, you have the, the big windows here. So something to contend with. So the last thing back here, talk about, again, there's less space on the transit between the upper part of the walls. But again, it's flat. So that's your con and your pro. One other thing is these ribs on the ceiling here that stick down. We're going to be putting um, wood strapping onto those that's glued and screwed. And then we're going to be running a cedar tongue and groove ceiling boards that obviously will be insulated. On the ProMaster, those are a couple of them are different heights than the others. And you have to do uh, some creative woodworking to get it all leveled out before you put your ceiling on. It looks like here in the transit, everything is the same. So that should really help. Yeah, the only place where we really have to do some work, just like the ProMaster, is in the very back. We're going to have to add a cross to have the board's last place to connect to on the ceiling. And then in the front, something similar. Haven't quite figured out what we're going to do up there yet. But again, um, we'll finish that off. It's, it's kind of the same between the ProMaster and the Transit when it comes to that. Alright, so I probably should talk about this first, but the most important thing, I think, is actually not in the back. It's actually up here in the front. And what's really important is what vehicle you feel comfortable driving the most. So if you can, what I would do is I would go test drive a Ford Transit and a Ram ProMaster if you're trying to decide between the two. You will very quickly, I think, decide which one you like to drive better. If you're the one that's going to be driving it all the time, you need to feel comfortable driving the vehicle. So the only reason that we sold our first build, there's two reasons, and got the Transit is, the first reason is because the bathroom design that we had in the ProMaster was not quite big enough for what I wanted. So I want a bigger bathroom. Could have lived with it, but you know, we were able to sell it and we're gonna try this new design. And probably the worst thing I did was go sit in a transit after I had the ProMaster. All right, so sitting in the driver's seat in the transit feels very comfortable for me. Uh, the ProMaster kind of felt like you're driving a school bus, like you're higher up in the seat you're kind of looking down on the steering wheel and the steering wheel is cocked more like this on our 2014 all the way to a 21 there was no tilt on the steering wheel there's the telescope but there's no tilt so the steering wheel angle short of shimming it like i did down a little bit is where it's set the seat did have a lot of adjustment when you put the swivels on it raises them up on the promaster i put on a lowered seat base to bring it back down to more of a stock ride height even with the swivels but it still felt like the combination of getting where i felt comfortable on the steering wheel and my foot and my leg i would just get kind of cramped up after driving the promaster for a while if i wanted to put the seat back further to where my leg was comfortable i couldn't reach the steering wheel even though it was all the way out so again everybody's different and what you prefer is going to be different. But for me, sitting in the transit feels more like I'm sitting in like a regular pickup truck or like a Ford Explorer or something like that. I'm in a more relaxed, natural position. My feet can stretch out to the pedals, the uh, steering wheel, both tilts and telescopes. So I can feel like I can drive this thing all day. Whereas in the ProMaster, after even just about an hour of driving, I was starting to feel fatigued. Also, since the seating position in the ProMaster is higher, 
it was a irrational fear or feeling because in no way was I ever about to tip over, but you're just sitting up higher and you've got a lot of weight in the build. So when you go around corners, it just kind of felt like you were more top heavy because you were sitting up higher, you know, I mean, it just, it's just human to feel that way. So you are definitely sitting lower in the transit and there's a lot more ceiling above your head than the ProMaster. And that makes you just feel more confident behind the wheel, even though you really aren't in a better position or it's no different, I should say. So definitely sit behind the wheel at least, drive them both, um, see which one you like best. I think that's probably really the most important takeaway from this video. All right, so let's segue into the next section here and that is basically the drivetrain of the vehicles. Okay, so the Transit, depending on what year you buy, if you get an older Transit, it'll either have a 3.7 liter non-turbocharged V6 engine, or it will have a 3.5 twin turbo EcoBoost engine. The newer 2020 and up Transit will have either a 3.5 non-turbo engine, like I have here, or a 3.5 twin turbo EcoBoost engine. All right, so I've driven all those combinations of vehicles. If you can get one with an EcoBoost, you probably will appreciate the extra power. Although I will say it is unnecessary, even in a heavy build, especially on a newer vehicle like this. This 2023 has a 10 speed automatic transmission, which allows this engine that still has about 300 horsepower to stay in its power band at almost every speed and range that you may need to go. That being said, if you can get the EcoBoost and it's within your budget, it's always better to have extra probably. You don't have to use all that extra power, but the turbos are one more thing that can go wrong on the engine. So that's kind of talking on the Ford side. If we're on the Ram ProMaster side, since 2014, when the Ram ProMaster came to the United States, they've had one engine option and it's still basically the exact same thing in 2023 and 24, which is the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 engine. It's basically what they used in, in Jeep Wranglers and caravans and other Dodge vehicles. Uh, it is a very good engine, but it does have some problems. So Fords and Rams both have their issues. They had um, some drive shaft issues with these older transits with some vibrations in the drive shaft and stuff. Not a whole lot of problems with the old six speed transmission. So the 3.7 engine or the older 3.5 EcoBoost came with a six speed automatic transmission. The Ram ProMaster came with a six speed automatic transmission on the 14 through I believe 21. It was either 21 or 22. They went to the new nine speed automatic transmission. And Ford in 2020 went to the 10 speed automatic transmission with either engine. Now, I will say from um, going through the forums, I can only speak to my 14 that had the 3.6 with the six speed. Everything ran good. The not new nine speed transmission still kind of up in the air on the ProMasters. Uh, some people said it doesn't really use all nine gears, maybe to try to keep the longevity on the transmission. I can tell you that this one does use all 10 gears and it's it's just really neat transmission. I'll just put it that way. All right, so again, I don't want to bash the ProMaster because I never had any mechanical problems with mine. And I do believe a lot of it comes down to maintaining your vehicle. And the problem is if you're buying one of these used and you don't really know the maintenance history, um, that's gonna be an issue. Uh, our 2014 Ram ProMaster we bought used with like 90,000 miles on it. We didn't really know the maintenance history, but we bought it from a dealer and it seemed to be well serviced. And we don't know what was replaced on it before we bought it. But one issue with the ProMasters, there's multiple issues. I'll just cover those real quick. There's something called the Pentastar tick, which can happen. Um, the same, they had the same problem with their Hemi V8 engines. Long story short, cam lifter, um, lack of oil, maintenance, whatever. 
the needle bearings go bad, and it starts making a ticking noise. Eventually the cams eat themselves and the um, lifters and everything kind of gets destroyed if you don't get it fixed. And that is quite an expensive repair if you take it to a shop to have it done. Also, ProMasters kind of have the phantom coolant smell. Um, obviously this isn't, this is the transit, but on the ProMaster, the coolant tank is right here. They like to leak. It's a known issue. Even if you replace that, it seems like there's always a coolant smell somewhere on the ProMaster. And if you, you have one, you'll probably agree with me. Even from the time they're new, it just, you get a hint of coolant every now and then. Again, ours never ran low on coolant. Always worked great. Never had any problems, but that is a known issue with the ProMaster. Also, the transmission on the ProMaster, not very good. The six speed was not a very good transmission. If you drive the van, like carefully, don't do like wide open throttle rips all the time. Don't slam it from reverse to forward over and over again. Like th they were used by, as Amazon vans. They can take some torture, but those transmissions are not really meant for the load. I don't think that they were carrying. So if you kind of abuse them, um, plan on a new transmission in the future. The Ford transmissions, pretty much the six speeds were basically bulletproof. Really no issues at all with the Ford six-speed automatic transmission. The new 10-speeds, not really been out long enough now. They've been out in some other vehicles a little bit longer. Don't really have a lot of data to say yes or no. Um, on paper, it's a very stout, uh, neat transmission, but that's all I can really say about that. The 3.5 engine, it's a Duratec engine that's in here, is just based on the pre prior generation so pending any kind of crazy stuff, um, these are very good engines. The only real problem with these was when the water pump would go out on like Ford Explorers internally, but the vans have an external water pump that is really easy to replace compared to the um, you know front wheel drive platform vehicles where the water pump was internal. So you don't really have to worry about that when you're buying a transit. Um, if the water pump goes out, which is the real only major issue on these, uh, engine wise, it's very easy to replace. All right, so drivetrain wise, I kind of alluded to this before. The ProMaster is front wheel drive and front wheel drive only. So in theory, that sounds better than just rear wheel drive only, right? In a car, front wheel drive does better in the snow. In a van, mm, we'll just leave that as a question mark. And the reason I say that is because when you get a really heavy build in the back of your ProMaster and you're trying to, let's say, go up a gravel hill, you're literally dragging all that weight with your front tires. So it's not like your normal front wheel drive car experience versus when you have all the weight on the rear drive wheels trying to go up that same driveway you actually have a little bit better traction so the one thing i'll say that made the big difference on my promaster was i put all-terrain tires on the front wheels that way where the drive tires had better grip it's not going to do any good except to look good to put them on the back so that worked good where the transit really shines is you can now get it in an all-wheel drive version it usually comes with the EcoBoost engine it's an Explorer-based transfer case, or PTU. And what that does is, it's, you know, it's primary rear-wheel drive. It sends, you know, all-wheel drive to the front. It's not a four-wheel drive system like the Sprinter. You can't control it, but it will get you out of probably a lot of sticky situations where you'd be stuck with the rear-wheel drive only version like I have, or the front-wheel drive ProMaster. So the new Transit Trail that came out, you got to decide if that's worth the ten eleven thousand dollar upcharge that ford puts on it but it comes with bigger off-road style tires it's all-wheel drive it's got a, a couple other little just like looks type of things that make it kind of neat but they kind of like put that out there for people who um want to get take their van in a little bit more sketchy situations so we don't plan on really getting into that sketchy of a situation ours has a limited slip 410 rear axle 
which means both tires will turn. It's not a one wheel peel situation. We did get the limited slip rear axle and the 410 gear, which gives this thing really good low end grunt and acceleration. I did another video where I did the zero to 60 time with this van, 8.2 seconds in a huge high roof extended van is superb. And that's the non-turbo engine. Horsepower figures between the Transit and the ProMaster, non-turbo obviously, are almost identical. Um, they both have plenty of power. Uh, the ProMaster only kind of ran out of steam, you know, up top when you were, it would just downshift more if you were, you know, highway speed going up a large hill, but it still always kept up fine, especially compared to driving like a large Class C RV or something like that. Um, I do feel that the 10 speed transmission in this is going to be better than my old ProMaster, but we're comparing apples to oranges there because of the year difference. The real comparison is a brand new ProMaster high roof extended versus a brand new Transit high roof extended. And again, about the same horsepower. Fuel economy on paper is just a little bit better on the Ford. It's like 15 to 19 ProMasters, a little bit less than that. Um, not really enough in practical use that it's probably going to make that big of a difference. It's all about your driving style and how heavy your build is. Um, ProMaster, when we were straight and level on the highway, we would get 18 miles per gallon, no problem. So I'm hoping for the same thing out of the transit. Last thing, mechanically or glitchy, the ProMaster seemed to have a lot more little electrical issues. So the reason is, is because like everything on the van is monitored. So if you have a license plate bulb go out, you're gonna have an, a warning message on the dash in your ProMaster. Um, the Ford does have similar features for like your brake lights and your headlights. If a headlight goes out, it's gonna tell you that there's a problem with the headlights. I mean, the ProMaster even had brake pad sensors that would tell you when your brake pads were too low. But the problem with that is all these systems and sensors it's, it's one extra thing to go wrong or break or fault when there's not really a fault. So I would say that the transit is a little simpler when it comes to the systems involved. And that's a good thing. Um, this 23 does have the lane keep assist. All that stuff is standard now on both models. Uh, I, I had a 2014 ProMaster, didn't have any of that. So I didn't have problems with that. Seen on the forums, seems like a decent number of people uh, report quite a few bit of issues with the lane keep assist system on the newer ProMasters. So your mileage will vary. Uh, I've already had a couple little, you know, problems with the, with the lane keep assist system on this van as well. Like telling me that there was something wrong with a sensor. So all this new stuff, you know, I will say the Ford, it's a little easier to disable that type of stuff than the ProMaster. But again, apples to oranges. I got my 2023 Transit here. Mm. Hey, the cow on both vans, um, these like to leak water. The problem with the ProMaster was they had a big seam that went right down the middle here. Uh, that would end up leaking water down onto your engine, the upper intake. It would rust out the bolts. If you did have to do work on the van, the bolts would be rusted out and it was made it extremely hard to get the intake off to service it. Uh, Ford's problem on the other hand, so they have the same situation. Their drains are like right here. You can see that it's supposed to drain down in the side, but what ends up happening is water starts spilling all over this really important electrical connection, which is for the whole engine harness. And right there is the powertrain control module, the PCM. So, not a really good design just to have water pouring all over your computer or your wiring harness so what a lot of people like to do is kind of make some kind of like cover to put over this area here just as an extra layer of protection and that goes for the ford and the promasters really you just got to make sure this area is sealed well um it also the water will leak between the windshield and the cow here on the promasters the transit it, they have a little bit better of a seal right here, so that's not as big of an issue. And they both have drains. On the ProMaster, there's little rubber drain hoses that get clogged really easy. You just got to maintain this area. You just cannot forget about it. And that brings me to another topic that people don't really 
know is that water leakage and penetration into the vehicle. So Ford Transit and the Ram ProMaster, there's a lot of metal that has to be, it's not all welded together on these vans. So for instance, on the Transit, you can see that black line right there. That is filled with a seam sealer, both of them. And it's the same on the ProMaster. So on our ProMaster, when we got it to 2014, it was actually, luckily we went for a drive in the rain when we first got it and there was water leaking in through the roof. So it was just the seam here needed resealed. I thought when we bought a van, we wouldn't have to play with leaky roofs anymore. And that was just an RV thing. But apparently there is some maintenance involved with vans. So it's important just to check those cracks every now and then. ProMasters also like to leak. There's cab lights up on the top that the Transit does not have. Each one of those cab lights is a hole in the roof. Again, there's just a little foam seal around each cab light. Uh, they like to leak. So we had to seal all our cab lights put new LED bulbs in them. It wasn't an issue anymore, but that's just another place that can leak that luckily on our transit, we don't have, so we don't have to worry about water coming in right there. All right, so I think that pretty much covers it. I'm sure there's something I left out. So if you have any questions, comments, be sure to leave them below. Like the video if it helped you out, and tell me what you think if you have been deciding between a ProMaster and a Transit, or maybe you're a Sprinter person who wants to tell me how dumb I am. That's fine. Be sure to leave a comment below subscribe for more again we're going to do a whole build on this van and it's all going to be on the channel in the future so we hope you come back for the next video until next time we'll see you later thanks for watching